Today we're going to have a look at how to make a cooldown timer. This is something you'll typically see in games like League of Legends, Dota, Starcraft. So it's a very versatile piece of UI and it's something you'll need in quite a few different types of games. So to do that you're going to need four sprites. You can download these if you want or you can make your own. You're going to need the actual icon for your ability. You're going to need an icon which you'll use for as it cools down. You might need another icon if you want to make that edge a little bit soft or highlighted or something like that. And then you'll need a frame or your UI that's going to go on the top of it. I've already imported these into Unity. But you'll want to make sure that you click them and change them all to sprites. I'm also going to go up here and turn my skybox off because I'm not going to use it. I'm also going to set my camera to look at a solid color. And I'm just going to pick actually the same gray that's up here. So next up, you're going to need a UI. So add a canvas. I tend to like working with the screen space camera. I drop the main camera over the top and I'll make it one unit away. I want to look at it from the back. And you look at it at the back because that's the way the camera is pointing. The so next up, let's add a UI button text mesh pro and import TMP essential. We'll need this for the text. If you just want to use Unity text, you can. I find Text Mesh Pro is much better for making sharp text. Now on the button, I'm going to use the Rec tool to make it a bit bigger. And then I'm going to go over here and actually make sure that I've got a square. And so for the button, the UI sprite is going to be the actual background that we're going to use. Now the text for the button probably needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm just going to set that to a number so we can see what it looks like. In fact, we'll probably want it to be quite a bit bigger than that. Let's maybe try 150. That looks good. I'm going to set the text to white. I'm going to go down here to where it says outline. I'm going to enable the outline, add a little bit of thickness. Good. And that will give me a black outline around my text. I do this because if I've got a range of different icons, you don't necessarily know whether the white is going to stand out enough. So having a little black border around it means that it works even for lighter colored icons. So next up, we're going to want our cooldown graphic. So click on the button. You want to add an image. You want to drag it into the button. And you want it to be above the text. And we'll just drag it out to the corners. And we'll apply the cooldown to that. So at the moment, obviously, that doesn't look very good. So we need to change a few things here. First of all, we're going to change it to Filled. And now when you do this, you'll, be able, you'll see that that fills as it goes around. But it's not starting at a point that we want. So let's do the Fill Origin from the top. And I want it to go counterclockwise. So now you can see that as you rotate around, that's your cooldown going. Again, you might not really look, you're obviously not going to like it looking like this. So let's add some opacity to it. Now I had a look at what other people do and they often in games, they add a little bit of color to it to make it look good. So I'm going to make mine blue. So that it kind of matches my ability. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another image. The 
And this image is going to be our frame. I just need to pull that out. Use the shift key just to keep it to a square. There we go, something like that. The next up, we're going to need to write a script that actually does the cooldown. Let's add a folder for our scripts. Let's make a C sharp script called Spell Cooldown. And let's open it in Visual Studio. Okay, let's start off by adding the libraries that we need. Let's add the standard UI class, although so that we can access images. And let's add TM Pro so that we can use Text Mesh Pro. Next up, we'll have to make references to those images that we made so that we can edit each of them. But the ones we're going to need are the image cooldown, the text for the cooldown initially. So we'll just work on those two. Now you'll notice I've made these private and you won't be able to see them from the Unity editor at this point. So all you need to do to change that is use serialize field. This is really useful, it means that Variables that should be private can remain private while still being accessible from the Unity editor. So you don't need to go and make all of your variables public if they're not really needed to be public. We're also going to need some variables to keep track of the cooldown. We'll need something to know whether the, whether the object is cooling down, how long it has to go, and how long it should last for. Now that we've done that, we need to hide the image for the cooldown initially because we won't be using that because your spell should be up and ready to use. Now I'm going to make a public function for using a spell. You can either activate this from a key press or from actually clicking it. So what I've done here initially is I've made a return a type bool and if we are already calling down and returning false, the reason I'm doing this is while it may not be that useful in this tutorial, if you're actually making your game, you might want to know if the person has pushed, pushed that spell and hasn't been able to use it because you may want to, for example, give feedback to the user with a sound effect that they can't actually use their spell at this point in time. And so if the spell is available, we want to set our cooldown timer and we want to turn the boolean is cooldown equal to true. Next up, we'll write a function for applying the cooldown. So first of all, we're going to subtract the time since, since this was last call, which is a frame, each time this goes. And time.delta time gives you that amount of time as a slice. And this is a really good way to subtract time because it will mean that if you've got a good computer or a bad computer, it'll run at the same speed. So it's really an essential way of making sure that it doesn't matter what processor you're using, you get the same speed. You'll really get tired of multiplying everything by time dot delta time to make sure of this as you make games.
So we now need to do an if statement, which will have two cases. One, the cooldown timer is less than zero, which means that we've reached the end of the cooldown and the spell is now available again. Or the second case of we've just taken some time off and we need to update how much fill is shown on the cooldown timer. So let's handle that if the cooldown timer is less than zero first. So in this case, we we'll want to set our is cooldown to false and then we'll want to hide our objects as we have before. I'm going to grab these two and paste them in here. Now moving on, in here we need to do a little bit of maths to A, find their text number, like how many seconds are left, and then we'll also need to show the fill down. But to find out how many seconds are left, you can just get your cooldown timer and round it to an integer. For the fill amount, all you need to do is get your cooldown timer and divide it by your cooldown time. So you can see I had to change this back to avoid because I found that I couldn't call this function while it was returning a bool from the UI. That's okay. You can still do your, if you wanted to play a sound effect in here. I'm just going to put a comment here. We also need to go to our update function and if is cooldown, we want to call our apply cooldown function. I'm going to add my script directly to the button. And I'm going to grab, let's call this image, image cooldown, and we'll call this button spell. So our image cooldown goes into here. And our text goes into here. We need to turn the raycast target off here. We also need to go to our image frame and turn the raycasting off on that. Now let's try this. And you can see we have a perfectly working cooldown timer at this point. Now going back to our script, we might want to bind this to a key press. So if you go up here and you go something like if and remember to save and go back to Unity. If I just clicked at that time, next time when it goes around, I'm going to give it a go with letter Q. So I press Q and you can see that it worked. So at this point you have a perfectly working cooldown timer. If you don't want the text, you can just delete it and delete it out of the script. One more thing I'm going to do, which you might like, is I noticed quite a few of these programs, they had a softish line or a highlighted line as the band was going around. So I'm gonna try and do that. So duplicate your cooldown image. Again, make sure it's below your text. I'm going to call this the image edge. I'm going to grab my basic edge objects and apply that instead. The reason I duplicated it rather than made a new image is I wanted it to have this blue color. I'm also going to scale it up. Something like 1.45. And the reason I want to do that is I'm going to rotate this and as I rotate it, if it didn't have that scale, it wouldn't reach the edge of the square. At the moment it's hidden behind the frame, so that's perfectly fine. If you're not using a frame or you have a much thinner frame, 
you'll have to do a little bit of maths to make sure that you get that scale right to get it to the edge because it's not necessarily a linear scale. So let's add this edge in and make this edge follow around as it rotates. So now we have a variable for our image edge. The next thing we want to do is we want to hide it the same way that we hit our cooldown text. And the last thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work out what the angle of it is or what it should be as it rotates around. That's pretty easy to do because all you need to do is know that it's 360 degrees in a circle, multiply it by the fill amount here and you'll get the right amount of degrees. Now let's save this and go back and see how it's worked. Okay, we have to do one more thing, which is down here. We want to go our image edge. And up here, we want to hide our image edge. So let's save this and give it a go and see if it works. You'll remember that we created a reference here, so let's drag our image edge into that. And now you can see the image edge is coming around. So that's your basic cooldown timer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you found it useful please feel free to subscribe, like or comment. I'll always try and answer any of the comments and help anybody who's having any problems.